So what I'd like to show now is what's driving a system towards stability. Or if a system is out of equilibrium, what realigns it? And fundamentally, uh, it is the second law which says that entropy will spontaneously uh, be maximized and is the entropy that's driving driving this and for this i want to show uh, and this is based on uh, problem 3.5 in the textbook uh, but i, I want to show a system in which you have two components and you could take any system and, and divide it up into little subcomponents but we're going to have these two components they're in you know some isolated box right now they're both uh one mole of copper and again i said this is from problem pr O B L E M 3.5. Uh, one is at T equals zero degree C, which is 273K. And the other is at T equals 100 degree C, which is uh, 373K. And following the textbook, we'll have the molar constant pressure heat capacity 22.64 plus 6.28 times 10 to the minus 3t. And this is uh, joules per mole Kelvin. Okay, uh, the idea is we take and we bring these in contact when they touch, heat will flow and they'll come to equilibrium. So right now they are, uh, I guess you'd call them metastable because they're in equilibrium, but they can't touch each other. And we're moving this, the space that divides them, they're allowed to touch and they come to equilibrium. So the first little bit of this is, is gonna follow from the is gonna follow from the textbook, and we're gonna skip the math here. There's uh, another video showing the, the details of the computation. But right now, let's just write out what we're doing. This is the heat that flows from the hot side to the cold side. And that is the integral from the hot temperature to the final equilibrium temperature of N Cp T dt. And the flow of heat out of the cool side into the hot side, which is going to have a different sign, of course, is T cool to T final N Cp T dt. And we can set these, well, equal, recognizing, of course, there's a difference in sign there. Oops. And notice I'm for each one, I'm computing it as though I'm inside the hot side or inside the cold side. And when 
you perform the integral, you get QCH is equal to 1223.02 joule, which is equal to minus QHC. Just write it here. It's not very pretty putting it that way, is it? QHC is equal to uh, minus 1223.02 joule. And the final temperature is 323.74 K, which is 50.74 degrees Celsius. So something that, that uh, the problem in the book wanted to point out was that this is not equal to uh, T hot plus T cold over one half. And I'm not gonna show it here, but it's really relatively simple to show that if you uh, take and uh, get rid of that temperature dependence and you just have a constant heat capacity, uh, when you perform this integral, you just get CP or 22.68 dt, which means that you actually do get a uh, uh, average. So the fact that we're getting a uh, these thermal effects is because the heat capacity has temperature dependence. And that's normal because a constant heat capacity, well, it doesn't exist. We know that heat capacities have this shape and they're always uh, increasing with temperature. But, uh, okay, let's continue. So we got that. We can compute the change in entropy on the hot side when heat flows out. So that's going to be the integral of TH T oops, TF N CP over T ET, which is minus 3.51. Joule Kelvin. And on the cool side, integral dt is equal to 4.18 Joule per Kelvin. So delta S, whoop, delta S is equal to delta H. Again, delta S H C plus delta S C H is equal to 0 0.67 Joule per Kelvin. Okay, so we've got a net increase in the entropy and this is entirely consistent with the second law. This is what we expect to see and is showing that delta S is toward maxima. Uh, and this is an irreversible change. And what I want to do next to show that it's reversible is I want to take our system which is now at uh, uh, 323.74 Kelvin and it's two mole and I'm going to take that I'm going to split the split it into two at 323.74 K, one mole, 
323.74 K one mole, put them in to contact with a heat bath. And this is going to be at uh, 27.3 K. And this one's gonna be in a heat, heat bath at 373 K. And that's gonna result in heat flow in, heat flow out until these return to 273 and 373. So I wanna reverse the process and look at how that occurs. Okay. So going to the cool side. You cool, where cool is going to be less than zero. Because this is uh, 323 and this is 273. So we have the heat flowing out of the system. Oof. Q cool is equal to the integral 323.74 to 273n cp dt is equal to minus 1243.83 joule. On the hot side, Q hot, this is 323, this is 373, Q heat is equal to, uh, well, gotta be greater than zero, and Q heat is equal to the integral from 323.74 to 373, N CP DT is equal to positive 1223.02. And if I put those two together, cool plus Q heat, I get minus 20.8127 joule. So in order for me to take these two, put them together, let them equilibrate, and now I wanna pull them apart and I want to, you know, if I had the capacity, I'd wanna just pull the heat out of the cool side, put it in the hot side, so they go back to their original state here and here, I can no longer do that. And the reason I can't do that is because the system has an excess of 20 joules of heat. So we have more heat that is getting uh, pumped out of the system than uh, is needed to increase the temperature of the hot block. So this is irreversible. Well, an external engagement of some sort, right? Whether that's uh, the, letting the system do work or 
uh, absorbing, uh, e emitting heat. And when I, you know, was working on this, and I, I thought, you know, this would be kind of a neat little lecture. I saw this, and I thought, wow, this really is uh, kind of offends a person's common sense, right? Because we start out with some internal energy, and that internal energy is associated with having two blocks that are separate and different temperature. I bring them together, the entropy goes up, but now there's also extra heat and because when we had the initial equilibrating, dW was zero, du is equal to Q, right? So that means that the internal energy is going up. And uh, that bothered me a lot. Uh, But looking at it and, and thinking about it, it's just how it has to be. The internal energy has to go up, but the free energy goes down. V minus TS plus PV, right? We've got minus TS. So as the entropy increases, the free energy diminishes. And what I thought was kind of a neat follow-up calculation was to determine the change in entropy for reversing and uh, If we say uh, the entropy uh, for, uh, well, this is the uh, cooling side. So this is the uh, 273, and this is uh, our block of copper at uh, 323 then the change of entropy in the copper up, is the integral from 323.74 to 273.00 CP n over T dt is equal to minus 4.18 joule per Kelvin. The change in entropy due to heat flowing into the heat bath, and this is flowing spontaneously because it's flowing from high temperature to low, is equal to, uh, sorry, uh, minus Q, cool over 273. So this Q cool, this is uh, the uh, heat that flows, the total heat that flows. And this is all being done at constant temperature, right? Because the heat bath is large enough that the temperature doesn't change. So that is, and we put a negative sign here because that Q cool was computed for uh, the system. So now it's the, the heat that's flowing into the bath, not heat flowing into the system. So that's where the negative sign comes from, which makes this plus 1243.83 divided by 273 
is equal to 4.556 joule per Kelvin, which means delta S for cooling is three, uh, sorry, 0 0.376, right? So that's just delta S bath plus delta S copper. And that's joule per Kelvin. And on the hot side, Delta SCU is integral from 323.74373 CP N over T dt, which is up. Oh, come on. Okay, which is minus 3.516 joule per Kelvin and delta S the bath is uh, minus Q heat over 373, which is uh, minus 3.5. 279 joule per Kelvin. So delta S heating is uh, 0 0.237 joule per Kelvin. And you know, these are both spontaneous processes because I'm putting uh, two parts that are in uh, with different temperatures in contact, so heat spontaneously flowing, which means that it makes sense to have a net increase in the entropy and you know to put the two together. is equal to 0 0.613, which is also greater than zero. So you put the uh, two dissimilar pieces of, or dissimilar temperature pieces of metal together, the heat flows, and they uh, you increase the entropy, you take them apart and you try to pump the heat back and you increase the entropy. So whether you're going forward or backward, the entropy is, is always increasing. And we know that corresponds to an increase in uh, heat. And this is you know, in some form of waste heat.